Welcome back, folks. I'm Kenjamin, and today I'm going to review Amazing George 2. Before we start with the gameplay, we're going to give a quick thank you to the people who made this video possible. First, I'd like to thank today's game developer, Spacefarer Games, for providing us with a copy of Amazing George 2. Secondly, I'd like to thank the Game Development World Championship for allowing me to collaborate with them. For those of you who don't know what the GDWC is, it's a yearly competition that is free to join for game developers. For any and all game developers out there, if you'd like to get more exposure for your games, whether it's a PC, mobile, or console game, and want to win some amazing prizes, then head on over to the GDWC page and check out how you can enter the yearly competition. If you're a gamer who's looking for a new indie game to play, you should definitely check out their page. I'll link the GDWC website in my description for all of you. Again, joining the competition as a game developer is completely free. With thank yous out of the way, let's go ahead and start the video. Amazing George 2 is a sequel to the original Amazing George. I haven't played the original game, but I'm going to assume that the sequel takes place right after the events of Part 1. Amazing George 2 released on Steam in January of 2022 and on Nintendo Switch in February of 2022. A DLC expansion was added for free download in March of 2022, which included a new storyline, new areas to explore, and a new playable character. Amazing George 2 starts you off as the main protagonist George, who ventures into the Black Cat Village and meets his friend Binky. Binky tells George that the villagers have been turned into dogs and that their master was most likely kidnapped by King Ratty. So George and Binky set off to find the keys required to open King Ratty's castle and get their master back. This game is most reminiscent of the early Final Fantasy games and classic PS1 turn-based JRPGs. There aren't any crazy strategies or plays that you can make, but that also means you can't just cheese everything and rush through the game. Now that we've gotten the logistics out of the way, let's get down to the positives of the game. Amazing George 2 is like most RPGs in the sense that it encourages you to explore every inch of the game. You'll find hidden paths to explore, dungeons with multiple paths, and the items you need to progress through the game. In terms of difficulty, the game gives you a moderate amount of mobs in the overworld that chase you throughout dungeons. Visually, the mobs are detailed in size, shading, and sound effects. You might think some mobs are greatly stronger than others simply based off appearance, but just remember that plants are weak to fire even if they're 10 times your size. My personal favorite design is the first dungeon boss you get to fight, the Vile Wyvern. I was pretty overleveled by the time I got to fight this boss, but it was still challenging enough to get me to question if I could actually win or not. And surprisingly enough, this first dungeon boss was actually harder to beat than the second one. Another positive to this game is that it's fast-paced. Games on the PS1 had a tendency to have slow dialogue and slow combat. Amaze Amazing George 2 makes it easy to rush through the dialogue and combat, making it easier to progress through the game and not have to spend majority of your time going through dialogue and cutscenes for hours. However, every game has its cons. Now keep in mind, this is just me being very nitpicky about things. Amazing George 2 is still an enjoyable game overall. Remember how I said this game is like most RPGs and wants you to explore every part of the game? Well, you can easily miss important items if you don't explore every path in a dungeon. After you leave Black Cat Village, you basically get no more guidance as to where you should go. There are no more villages in the game, and you're not really sure what direction you should go. To make matters worse, the map you have at the bottom left of the screen isn't the most accurate. It doesn't tell you what terrain you can go on, and it's not the easiest map to read. Sometimes you'll walk through a part of the dungeon and it doesn't even show up on the map, which is pretty misleading because you would assume that you can't go that direction, but then you can go that direction and you might end up missing an item or two. Also, there's an item called the Feather. 
The description says that it'll lift you up, but it doesn't do anything if you try to use it in battle, in a town, or in a dungeon. If it does do anything, then I don't notice it at all and should probably take a break from RPGs for a while. But now that I'm thinking about it, maybe feathers are used to cure stuff like curses or something? Or to cure other status ailments? Because maybe the feather doesn't actually lift you up physically, like it lifts a status ailment? Overall, Amazing George 2 is a game that will keep you entertained for up to 6 or 7 hours. If you add the free DLC, you can probably maximize that 10 hours after collecting everything in the game. If you're a fan of JRPGs or cats, I recommend you check out this game. I'll leave the Steam and Nintendo Switch links in my description for all of you to check out. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video!